Hello guys, this is IDQ and in this video I want to talk a little bit about Nyx Assassin as a position 4 hero. I really think he's super super strong and he might be one of the most picked or most banned heroes in the upcoming TI. I've actually sort of made a video about this. Um, I believe it was called 5 or the most underrated heroes for each uh, position and Nyx was one of them. So I sort of you know, knew this, that this was going to happen. If you like this type of content, go to gamersclass.com for just $9.99 a month, watch masterclasses with pro players, join exclusive live sessions, and get 24 seven access to coaches and other high MMR players. Get full control of your rank games and start owning with our Supreme Dota 2 membership. This, as you can see, Nyx was uh, picked first phase. So I'll try to explain a little bit, a little bit about uh, the draft B8, but I will obviously mainly focus on the Nyx. So the usual build for Nyx right now is going to be Aghanim Scepter. So you kind of want to rush an Aghanim Scepter simply because it will give you like 40 HP regen, HP mana is getting increased, you take reduced damage, you're invisible, you have longer range on stuns, your carapace is AoE also. I mean, you stun people even in an AoE where you are borrowed and stuff like that. So super, super strong, especially at sieging and uh, defending high ground. It sort of become like one of the best heroes to defend high ground with, simply because you'll just mana burn uh, the enemy heroes from like here, even even though they're hitting the tower here, and you can stun them like a lot of range. Uh, yeah, so because of that, you actually sort of want to rush the Agnim Scepter first. It's just really, really strong. Trust me when I say this. He's been strong for a long, long time. However, he's going to go for a different build in this game. He is going to build a Blink Dagger first. Blink Dagger is really, really good on Nyx. However, I wouldn't really recommend it. But as I said, they first pick Nyx and because of the nature of the draft, they don't really have any initiation. Right, so that's why Nyx is going to want to buy a blink in this game. Uh, it's simply because they have Disruptor, and you know Disruptor doesn't really initiate as a position five. If it was if it was something like I don't know Shadow Shaman Lion that could blink, could uh, buy a blink and go in, obviously it would be better for them. Terrorblade position one obviously doesn't really uh, doesn't initiate. Darkseer doesn't really initiate. You know he's sort of counter initiator with ult vacuum and stuff like that and just uh, sort of buffing his teammates with iron shell and you know lastly but not least is that the playing uh, windrunner which you might think is a decent initiator but you actually need like a bkb to go in especially against the opponent's draft kuka has a lot of magical damage lion is the same with magical damage this guy hoodwing is also the same with magical damage so you can't really initiate so that's why he has to go for a blink on uh, nix assessing his lane is actually kind of bad, right? Because it, there's a Lifestealer, and Lifestealer is really, really good against Darkseer and Nyx. They're both melee. He lifesteals a lot of them. And also, he doesn't care that much about the Iron Shell, again, because of the Feast. So he just regenerates the, the HP that they're trying to burn through. So the lane stage on Nyx, it's mostly consistent of poking at the opponent. As you can see, he has 4.6 regeneration level one i mean level two it's like 4.4 level one but it's insanely high right so you can easily trade 1v1 with supports which is exactly what he's going to try to do with his uh hoodwink he's also trying to stop the pulls which is really really important to do simply because in a 2v2 situation you're not really strong unless you have a way to use spike carapace so in this lane he doesn't have any way to use spike carapace against life there right unless he attacks him which you know is his mistake he, there is no uh, counterplay. I mean, he won't af be affected by Spike Carapace. So that's why he's holding the point and he will actually scale Mana Burn. One thing that you want to pay attention to and, you know, try to do, this is a really nice play. He's actually stacking for his Darkseer with uh, his Impale from low ground. You can obviously stack for your uh, carry or your off laner, mid laner, whatever it depends. Even an Ancient. It's really, really nice if you could do that. Especially in this type of lane where you're not really that useful. Simply because, you know, if uh, this Lysir were something like uh, Slark or something like that, he would be a lot, lot more useful against him. So, yeah. 
same as uh, if they had like a juggernaut, you couldn't really do anything instead of Lysiter. So try to maximize your impact in the game. This is a really nice play that he's going to do right here. He's suiciding for his Darkseer, which is really, really nice because he wants to refill his bottle. And also they don't get if they trade in an unfavorable matchup. So this is really important. If you can die one for one, support for support in the lane that you're losing or unfavorable in Dark Saber versus Life Saber would be perfect example literally this game. You should try to do that. If you die, this type of lane is actually really, really good for you. Because, you know, obviously you can bring back items and stuff like that, but it's more favorable for you to die for an opponent. So yeah, he's going to most likely go and stack again a little uh, sooner because now Hoodwink is going to play a little bit more careful. So because of that, they won't really be able to get another kill on him, most likely. And that's why he will go and stack. So as was saying before, one thing that you want to pay attention when picking Nyx, actually trying to play this zero, is to do it when the opponents have AOE damage or spells that they can really control. So sort of uncontrollable damage. One perfect example in this game would be Skunka. He has big AoE on Ghost Ship, so you can spike characters at every single time, right? If you're in the vicinity of his um, ultimate, you can obviously just spike characters. Same with Tidebringer, same with Torrent, you know, Lion also with his Q. So it's really good because of that. Same as this guy's Breadfire and Ultimate, if he has AoE uh, like level 12 or something, you know, level 2 Ultimate. Or you know even later, but uh, that's one of the things that you want to pick it against. Any AOE, especially something that they can't really control. So Nyx as a hero right now counters a lot of heroes. I mean, it actually counters every single hero in the game, most likely. In a certain way, it counters like every hero almost. I mean, you know, maybe not Brute and Meepo, but that's that's another story. So why is that? It's really you know important question well first of all you have multiple ways to be useful even in, in this game where he isn't really useful on lane he can still do stacks for his team obviously every support can do that but uh, another thing is really, really important you have multiple disables which is super nice impale and then spike carapace you also have mana burn it's very sort of similar to Lion, obviously, but you know, this is you have to hold it there and you don't do damage with it, so it's downgraded this spell to be honest. Sort of. So, no hero is really useful without mana, right? You have to disable so you can control people for a long time. You have mana burn, like almost no hero is really useful without spells like that. You have pure damage on Vendetta, you can scout people with this, you can set up for ganks, you can initiate can do a lot a lot of stuff and this spell is actually creative vendetta gives you bonus damage 300 pure damage not counting your you know base damage so basically it gives you a 300 something damage nuke uh, more likely most likely like 400 damage nuke at level 6 and if you get like level 6 9 minutes in i mean obviously you won't get it right here but you have like a 400 pure damage nuke level 9 if you can set up, I mean, if you, have, if you have another hero in your team, for example, Windrunner in this game, or any anything that could remotely gank or something like that, just try to do something with your teammates, you can get any kill on any hero. Simply because you have pure damage. And there are really a lot of spells that do pure damage. It would be like just Invoker Soundstrike, maybe uh, TA's Psy Blades, but you know, you sort of have to be close to do that. And yeah, it's really, really strong. So, let's try to skip a bit further until he gets his ultimate, which is another really important power spike for the hero. Because then you gain the ability to, you know, set up for your team, scout for them, get kills easily. Well, I, I thought he would escape because he didn't uh, check a shot, but <laughs> I guess the glimpse was there. They communicated that. It's really nice. Okay, so he's going to get level 6 so As you can see, they're still losing. They were losing like 3 lanes before they got the kill bottom. They're still 3000 gold behind. And there aren't really a lot of things going on in this game. It's only 2-4. And usually Nyx likes to be a part of a lot of stuff, right? Uh, kills and <laughs> obviously. You don't really farm that well. 
that's the only like issue with the hero because this impale is not really that much um, it doesn't really kill the range creep instantly so that would be the only sort of issue that a hero might have so yeah Let's see now he got level six and this is the first game that the first game that they go for I believe they were even under a word if I mean when he went in so the most important thing, I mean one of the most important things when playing X is to actually have a teammate to play with. As I mentioned before, Invoker to Sunstrike or something like that, Storm Spirit to jump with you, to take use of the scouting ability that you can get and the ganking potential. Really nice thing is that you also get bonus uh, movement speed when going in this. So it's really, really nice. As you can see right here, he almost solo kills the lion. I mean he could have if he probably uh, spied Carapace. However, he did it, but it doesn't really matter that much. They're still able to get the kill very, very easily with just the support, another support. So they got a four position kill for a five position, which is really nice for them because Terrorblade is farming. Look at where he went. He's here. And then we try. There were like three heroes here trying to, you know, fight them to get counter kills and stuff. However, they still managed to get a kill. He got out. And look at this TP. It's just AFK hitting creeps. I mean, not AFK hitting creeps. This is what he's supposed to do. So it's really, really nice that he's able to go and make place in the opposite part of the map where you know whereas his team can just do whatever they want in the opposite two lanes which would be I mean sort of mid and top in this case another really nice thing that is sort of underrated is that the opponents can really just uh you are really useful even when not doing anything if you're just afk in base as an X, you're actually still doing stuff even indirectly, the opponents would be like, yo, where is this Nyx? What is he doing? You know, they have to be scared of you and try to actually understand what you're doing. And, you know, think what you would be doing. Even when you don't, even if they don't see you on the map, they will still need to be scared of you. Simply because you could be invis on top of them and try to set up again. And there's like no team that is going to have... Um, infinite sentries you know there's only like 10 sentries so they can't really cover the whole map or a whole area where they want to farm so because of that you're even useful for your team even if you're not that useful actually you know that's not really underrated part of the hero because you know a hero like i don't know uh lion let's say if you're 0 10 with lion you're nobody's gonna care about you but with nix you can still be useful by not even participating in the game almost so another thing that's really really nice about Nyx is as I mentioned before you need sentries and dust to deal with it and you know there aren't really many supports that can do that I mean, obviously there is like bounty hunter but bounty hunter doesn't have that nuke potential that Nyx has and you know because of that and bounty hunter also doesn't really have the same impact in a team fight. obviously you know track is really really nice but he doesn't have two disables he doesn't have mana burn he doesn't have that many uh stuff to do so this game is as i mentioned before is not really that action packed which nix would like however as you can see he's still doing his best and in this situation is actually advantageous for them sort of because of the carry matchup this terror blade is going uncontested simply because of the pressure that nix is achieving he went up got a tower killed kunka because of his stun pressure they're tier 2 almost you know they're just hanging around the opponent's uh, part of the map. Look at what is happening right now, you know, this Terrorblade is almost going to die right there However, because they were playing top, they knew that nobody's top, right? Just Lion, but Lion wasn't showing That was, I believe, their mistake. They sh didn't show online, so they knew that Since nobody was showing on the map That mean that that meant that Terrorblade was going to get ganked Simply because they won't really gank a Winter and that doesn't really matter. Doesn't make sense Especially when they have a terror blade. So because of the carry matchup, it's actually really advantageous what they're what is happening in this map. Which is just basically farming. Meanwhile Nyx is actually gaining a lot of you know making a lot of space indirectly for their terror blade. That's going to out farm, out scale, and out carry this life stealer. Like ninety percent of the games that is what is happening in this matchup. Simply because, you know, Terrorblade has a lot of armor, he doesn't really care about Life Stealer. Life Stealer has no way of clearing the illusion. He doesn't really care about the rage of Life Stealer. He can just right click him down because of the uh physical damage that he gets. So it's really really nice because of that. Let's try to skip ahead a little bit to see the next 
Carl Spike or the next moment that they're going to um, get a lot stronger, or even this team fight. So right now, Leicester are tied. Another really important thing about this uh, matchup, which is not really next next related, would be that you know Terrible can also pressure buildings and take rush. Meanwhile, Leicester doesn't really do that well, you know, tower damage and stuff like that. So yeah, they're they're really advantageous in the carry matchup. So because of that, they're not really afraid to, you know, take risks, play the opposite part of the map, simply because they know that if they do that and they fail, the opponents wouldn't really have a counterplay and they won't really be able to gank the Terrorblade or do get something in return, just like the Nyx skill, you know, which isn't really that important in the grand scheme of things. So I'm going to skip ahead a little bit until he has like a Nyx to see how his playstyle changes. As I said before, you really want to go for an Agony Scepter and just be sort of like a tanky frontliner for your team. I mean, not really a frontliner, but you could also be technically a frontliner for your team because of the damage reduction that you are going to get. So the build before would be like Etherlands, you know, the previous build. But right now, you, as I mentioned before, you would want to get X first and then go for a, like Etherlands or something like that, Yule Scepter, whatever you feel like is necessary. Uh, it's simply because X gives you a lot more for a lot less gold. Ethan is like 2k gold or more than 2k gold and X does the same thing however it gives you another ability that's super super strong gives you another disable AOE with the stun gives you you know more range which would be Ethan's so a lot a lot more stuff than that only also regen and yeah more 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 a lot more stuff so rise now, I mean, soon he's going to get his blink there, and then his playstyle is going to change a little bit. Their whole playstyle is going to change a little bit. Even if they're, even, yeah, though they're 5,000 gold behind, they can manage to uh, climb to the, I mean, manage for a little bit right there to climb to the first position in network. So, right now he got his um, blink. What you want to try to do with blink dagger, it's obviously just initiate for the team which the hero is really really great at simply because the opponents won't really be able to counter your initiation because if they try to you know jump on you in return you can simply spot carapace so they won't really be able to deal with you that well as with other heroes like an air shaker if you blink it with air shaker you're not going out same as a clockwork if you just hook shot in you're not getting out that well unless you have a four step but with nix you are sort of able to just uh initiate over and over again because of the defensive mechanism of spike carapace so this is i guess one of the um major team fights that is going to happen so right now he is obviously scouting for his team which is really nice as you can see it's really nice that he didn't hit there so you shouldn't really greed for a support kill if you don't know if they have vision so he probably assumed that they have vision there, which is correct. They had vision on the hill right there. So you should just be blinking in. Because if you don't just blink in, you're just going to get disabled by the support. And then you might die. Without getting the lion kill, they wouldn't have gotten this all. They wouldn't have gotten lifestyle kill, they wouldn't have gotten the DK kill. Obviously the DK kill is just because of his buyback, but still, it's really, really nice regardless. So they're just going to translate this into a lot of farm for the DB. They don't really care, as I said. If they got towards the late game, they're going to be okay. Right now, the opponents are going to go Rosh versus Darkseer and Disruptor, and they're going to get destroyed right here. So, yeah. Obviously, a really nice combo from Darkseer, and then uh, Disruptor and his stun is really, really nice in pale to deal with them. His next build, I mean, his next item is going to be A on this. And I wouldn't recommend buying it on this, to be honest. I really don't feel like this item is that good, to be honest. Um, I know it might be sort of a controversial, whatever. I've seen people on Reddit and, you know, commentaries and stuff like that say that, oh, this item is OP, whatever, it has to be changed. I don't feel like it. It doesn't give you amazing stats. It doesn't really do that much, unless it um, it is used in a really nice manner and that would be sort of versus enigma ravage you know black hole ravage rp chronosphere and that would be about it like yeah, i wouldn't really buy this item that much it's simply because look for example 
this item is built as a counter initiation, right? To disable the opponent's jumping ability on. It. For example, this DK or Lion would blink in, you know, they would stun him. And then his item would proc and he would be able to counter react to the counter, you know, with his own spells. However, I don't think that is that great. Like, the item costs like around 3000 gold, right? So, if this disruptor would get 2000 gold for a 4 staff, if he would just be turning in the correct direction, he would simply be able to get away. And then the opponents are not going to be able to chase him into the force staff unless they would get out of position and it's sort of the same mechanic but with less gold and more efficiency less cooldown more ways to use it it's just simply a better item my opinion and then you would say oh well what if disruptor gets jump well you know what if nix gets the force step also then you have two force step instead of two a or discs or other i mean yeah a and disc and it's 2,000 gold less. That 2,000 gold less can be used for another Glimmer Cape or something like that, and it's a lot better. This item only works, as I mentioned, with like big ultis and stuff like that, in my opinion. I mean, obviously, you could show me a clip where it was, oh, awesome, whatever, they were able to turn, but they would be able to do that without, you know, the Netherlands. I mean, most likely. It's just that. I don't feel like the item is that useful simply because if you're out of position you die anyway right so if you're in a 5v5 situation why isn't someone in your team forcing you or glimmer keeping you or lotusing you and you would still be okay and that's why i think it's not that great simply because if you're out of position you're still going to die this item won't impact you not dying in like three heroes or the enemy hard carry hitting you because of three seconds or whatever you know if you're playing support if you're playing a core, you know, ah, maybe the item would be decent in some cases. However, on support, I wouldn't really recommend buying this. So, yeah. I've seen a lot of people go for this, even on support, and I really don't enjoy seeing the item. I don't think it's great. Stats aren't great, and yeah, I mentioned some stuff before. Uh, they sort of want to find the chance to go high ground right now. But the main issue is that... Uh, they're struggling to find opponents simply because they have an Aegis and stuff like that, so it's really not that uh, it wasn't working in their favor that, much, that well because you know, the opponents are obviously a pretty good team, so they knew how to play the map. So right then when they initiated on someone, Hoodwink, they also got an Aegis kill in return. So it's really, really nice. That's exactly what they were looking for. They were sort of baiting with a kill, you know, Forcing the opponents to go on him because this, uh, you know, free kill is pushing as a position 5. But then instead they just gank the terror blade in return. So they managed to get another kill and then they're just going to translate that into taking some towers. Meanwhile he's just not showing on the map. Which is a really really important thing. This should be done on heroes like Shaker also. And anything that can set up a kill. X. X is a really nice hero that you can just AFK in the trees almost. Just wait for someone there with your teammate. Or even if you're not strong, the opponents are still going to have that in the back of their mind, right? It's sort of um, like a carry that's not showing, but in reverse. A carry that's not showing is like, yo, this guy, he might be getting a lot of farm. He might be having six slots. But when a, like initiator doesn't show or stuff like that, you know, if an initiator doesn't slow, I mean, doesn't show or... Um, if they're just hiding in the trees, you're always going to be in the uh, back of the mind of your opponent. They're always going to think about, yo, where is this guy? Is he ganking me right now? And they they will feel constricted by their gameplay and where they can show on the map and stuff like that. So it's really nice because of that. They just got like two kills right now. Obviously, it's really, really nice for the team. So they can obviously just go and translate that into taking two rexes or one rex at least yeah one rex but then what the way afterwards probably could have taken the second rox you know most likely however it's still an okay play they're, they're sort of the game sort of won because um uh, terrible there's no way that he can like die anymore look at his hp is 3000 hp 40 armor bkb sny so status resistant also a lot of life steal a lot of damage because of daedalus and that is all because of uh nix Nix's ability to play the map and actually make plays and a support as a support. Even though, as I said, the 
I mean, you saw the uh, game was like five five with ten minutes or you know fifty minutes in. There wasn't really that much going on. However, I mean, the hero that threatens the opponents even while not showing in the map is most likely going to win this type of games. So yeah, they just they're sort of just the opponents are just crumbling right now because they weren't able to cash their plate. Meanwhile, they were able to set up gangs on the uh, left there and stuff. So yeah, the game is sort of over right now. I really think you guys um, learned some stuff from the video and let me know what you think in the comments below. But as I mentioned before, last thing before I go is I'm pretty sure 90%, 95% of the games you should be just rushing Agony Scepter. Unless you're just... Mm, it is really necessary for you to just initiate. If you have zero initiation, yeah, go for a Blink Dagger. Else, just go for Agony Scepter and that buy what you feel like. Other items that are decent after Agony Scepter would be Aetherlands to have even more range and like Yule Scepter, Lotus Orb, so you dispel the dust that the opponents might just cast on you, right? Because if, if they just sentry on the ground, then you can just walk away, right? <laughs> walk away and just borrow somewhere else and still have a lot of range to cast and dispels. See, the sentry's got nerfed the uh, range. So, I've been at the queue, guys. Have a nice day. Thank you for watching the video.